like the class, like one of the jokes from my comedy is like the classic was when I was telling my parents that I was telling my mom that I wanted to be com- a comedian. So I told her I wanted to be a comedian when I was 14. And she said, oh, maybe it's better if you just die. (laughs) Guys, what's up? I'm going on tour. Go to jasonnashtour.com all summer long. 18 shows I have planned. June 4th, Ontario, California. June 18th, Irvine, California. June 25th, San Jose, California. July 2nd, Oxnard. July 7th, Boston. July 9th, Philly, Tampa, Orlando, Austin, Phoenix, Columbus, Toledo, Levittown, Buffalo, Brea, back in California, Nashville, Louisville, Hartford, Liberty Township, Ohio, Albany. Those are the shows that I'm doing this summer. Maybe we'll be adding more. Trying to find one in Chicago. Come see me live, uh, especially California. I'm doing those shows early in June. So anybody in Southern California, come see me. Also San Jose. Go get your tickets at jasonnashtour.com. Guys, what's up? Welcome to the All Good Things podcast. We're here with a legend today, a legend in comedy. I can't believe the guests we get here. Okay, you know when it's a grower, not a shower? And that's when it starts off like really small and you don't think it's going to be anything and then a breeze goes by and suddenly it's like an elephant trunk. It's like, ah, this huge thing. And I'm like, no, that's like too, no, I, that's too, I want like half that. That's way too much. That is- I can't believe you're here. I'm so excited. I'm so honored. To I'm have honored. You here. Thank you. Margaret Thank Cho you. here in the building. She has a new tour called Live and Livid. Yes. Correct? She's going to uh, Boston. She's going to Austin. She's going to Portland. She's going to, she just went to Boston. Uh, Irvine, Oxnard. You can see her on tour this summer. An honor to have you here. Also, Margaret, today we have our, uh, our new co, we're trying out a new co host today. Mm. Jonah, Nick. I need a job. I, I like it. Yeah. Good. <laughs> I'm glad. Margaret, Margaret, what have you been up to? You're you're touring. I'm touring. Are you acting a lot? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're, I see you're, you're in a ton of stuff. Yeah, I like acting. Yeah, it's yeah, fun. Yeah. We I saw you on one of my favorites is around Thirty Rock. Oh yeah, that incredible. was really cool. I she played Kim Jong Un on Thirty Rock and Kim Jong Il. Yeah, right. I played them both. Um, but my favorite job I was looking up today was on the Red Shoe Diaries. No way. Remember that show? I remember. When did you do that? It was like a mm. soft core. Por- show for like cable tv in the 90s it was in 1993 so 30 years ago and i forgot and um i want to watch it i i just saw that it's on 2b which is my favorite streaming service so i have to go watch it when i get home were you margaret cho then or were you just an actor i was just an, i don't know Incredible. it was always i was still margaret cho i was a you know right but i was a you weren't famous comedian and I had not really done any acting yet yeah so that was my first one of my very first acting jobs you didn't have the sitcom yet no, oh, wow. that didn't happen until a year later. But so the, um, the, yes, they, they, before there was porn in the internet, we would watch Sk- uh, Cinemax or Skinemax, and there was a show called Red Shoe Diaries that was just like very soft core, right? And you would, yeah, and you could usually see no, no, no poop pubes, <laughs> no pubes, but lots of. Um, I love pubes. I'm a huge pube guy. Yeah, no pubes. Like I'm, I'm like the type of like drown me with your pubes. Like yeah, I do. I like it too. I like a bush all over my face. Like put your bush on. My yeah, face. I like it too. And so I'm um, like a huge pube guy. But and they're kind of rare, actually. There's not a lot pubes of pubes. Pretty, yeah, pubes are. It's more of like older women type, like cougar type of vibes. Yeah, when you see a pube. Yeah, like like pubes aren't like really, like now nowadays. I feel like pubes are kind of weird, but like yeah. That's why I go like for sixty plus. Oh, very good, <laughs> yeah. very good. Um, the, but you know so what? The thing about pubes that is good is that it does protect you against some STDs. I think it does. Yes, is, does it? It's a physical barrier between um, you and somebody else. So you have anything like that, like a pube or or whatever. <laughs> it's but it is. It's a pretty like standard, like good physical barrier for some things, not everything, okay. but some things. That, that's just a plus. Yeah. And there's Just also a flavor like saver like. if you like to do that too. The what? A flavor saver if you like to do that too. I'm all about flavor, and I <laughs> yeah. love eating too. We like, can tell. I'm a big. I'm a we big eater. About flavor. Yes. So good. Any, any, seriously, like any type of flavor. He just got a million free points at El Pollo Loco. <gasps> really? Yeah. <laughs> oh wow, that's great. Yeah. What do you get there when you go? Uh, I get the, um, I get the uh, the local bowl. Oh, okay. The lo- oh, I think it's called the local. It's called the local bowl, and then I get the uh, the three piece with mm-hmm. uh, two two thighs and a leg, mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. and then I usually go for like rice and beans. Oh, I've never had the chicken there. Really? Yeah, I only get the um, my favorite items are seasonal, and uh, so it's just like go oh, the shrimp taco, and I don't I don't get it that often because it's I'm always al- seasonal. I'm allergic to like shrimp and stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. Can, can we see Margaret as Kim Jong Un? the show jonah i look exactly the same i mean it's basically me without makeup maybe in shorter hair but i look the same to me yeah that's oh that's actually that was um during the golden globes and you got a lot of for this yes they said how dare you portray an asian yes (laughs) so you know because i was being asian and i i don't know what it is i was culturally appropriating my own culture (laughs) Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And you fought back on it, right? You tweeted well, yeah. the next day. You said, as long as they're like gassing my people and stuff, I'm going to. Yeah. Well, yeah, they're actually, I mean, the the humanity, the, the, the crimes against humanity in North Korea is like, it's just, you can't even imagine. So I can make stupid jokes like this. You've obviously never been there, right? I have been to North Korea once. Oh, you yeah. can go into, um, so when you go to the DMZ, the demilitarization zone, you can go through and kind of be in officially North Korea a little bit, yeah. but you can't stay there for more than a few minutes and they bring you back. So I've never actually been, but right. my family um, is Korean and predates the separation. Yeah. So there are family members there that we don't know if they're alive or dead. We, we're not sure. It's very sad. And you grew up in San Francisco. Yes. Right. Yes. And your dad was a minister. My grandfather was a minister. Was a minister. And my dad owned a gay bookstore in San Francisco. So we have the best of both. You started doing shows there, right? You yeah. Used to stand up. They had a comedy club above the bookstore where you could purchase tomatoes at the front of the show and the desk, sort of in the front desk, and then you can go back and throw them at the comedians. No way. So I never really got things thrown at me because I was so young. I was 14. So nobody threw anything at me, but a lot of comedians got really pummeled. Amazing. And and you had a real tumultuous childhood that reminded me of like Richard Pryor's childhood almost. Kind of. Right? Well, I had a lot of like gross, like um, bullying and molestation and things like that. But I think that's also very much the time period. Yeah. And, you know, when you're gay, like you get a lot of shit. Yes. When you're a gay kid, you get a lot of shit. Yeah. I know my sister's gay. And, and, mm-hmm. and that was like, it was a tough, um, obviously not tough for me. I mean, obviously tougher for her. But growing up in that time was like, there was a time where it was just like, um, I, I was alive during that time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then sort mm-hmm. of the floodgates kind of opened up and it became more acceptable. But watching her go through that in high school, it was, it was rough. It's really hard. So yeah. if you're 50, then you understand like that era was like the 80s and 70s were so homophobic for like just everybody. But especially if like you're a queer kid and other kids kind of really like can acknowledge that there's something different about you. They may not be able to know exactly what it is, but kids fear what's different. Yeah. So it's a very tough thing. Yeah. And you worked as a dominatrix and as a a phone sex operator? I was a phone sex operator. That's what I played on (laughs) The Rich Your Diaries. Oh, you did? So I played a phone text operator. Just a coincidence that they cast you as that? Um, I've, I can't remember how I got that job. I, I don't know, but I, well, I remember how I got the phone sex job is- What's the money like at a phone sex job? It was pretty good because um, we we got upgraded from the, uh, the, the live phone sex where you have to talk to somebody until they nut, which takes relatively little time if you, if you know how to do You're it. Good, yeah. But the goal is to keep them on the phone for a long time. Right. So um, it's it's like uh, we got upgraded to doing the recorded phones where we were recorded messages where we were on uh, like so just in a booth. And so we were recording things and sometimes we would get paid double if we could write out the copy and then read it and then record it. So we would get paid for like the content and okay. also the voice so yeah so you use your writing skill yeah, yeah. so we would make like a hundred dollars a session which is a lot for like a few minutes in a booth yeah in the 80s uh, tons of money incredible tons of money so i was Especially making enough young, yeah kid. i was making enough money to live off of oh which was God. great but my other job was at the same time i was at the raggedy ann at the fao schwartz Oh no! So way. I was in the the children's um, sort of the doll section, and I was not a salesperson, but I was there to entertain the kids. 
sort of ostensibly while the ki- parents were paying. And um, then I would go and I would do my phone switch job. Lucia. And, and when did you have time to go to school? I dropped out of school when I was about 16. Really? So I didn't really think was, about any of that. Was that scary to drop out of school at that time? No, because I just didn't care about any of that. Like I really just wanted to be a comedian. Yeah. And so also having that phone job and the <laughs> children's toy store job, it allowed me to just focus on stand-up comedy. So I could just do that. Right, right. Don't have you ever called the phone line? I had a neighbor who lost his house to that. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, he, he would he would always be on the phone. Just talk. Uh, calling phone sex lines and he, when he just he couldn't pay his mortgage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For like four or five months because he just kept jumping off to yeah. phone sex lines. Yeah, it's an addiction. And it, it was it was like all around town. Like we all knew like Jim really? lost his house to phone sex line. Yeah, it's so hard. I, I, I personally never explored it. Maybe I did one time. I might have. <laughs> with like my cousins, we were, in, we were doing a circle this is a real story. We were in a car. In the car doing a smoking, circle? We were smoking weed, and we um, we called a phone line. Like on a speaker? Yeah. Mm. And we were just all off. Was in it the Margaret? car? Well, I don't know if it was Margaret. <laughs> I it might have been. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, well, there's a lot of the aspects of that story I have questions about. Now, if you're going to do it in a circle, how do you do that? Is it, there's four people in the car. I was in the passenger seat. Okay, so um, I thought you had to be in a. I didn't realize that circles were actually real. No, they're real. Me and like, I grew up um, with my friends <laughs> going and, in a circle. Yeah, we're we're all we're all straight dudes, but we would all we would all like close our eyes and each other off. Oh, so it's like um, it's like hands a across and pull type America. Of thing, but you're also you're all you know your boys are also doing the same thing to you. So you know it's not like. You don't do it, and you're like, okay, cool. Like, you know, as you, long as you get a nut on, it's it's all good. So, where but would you point the nut? Wherever, like, you can like put put it in a cup, or like you can even like when you're about a nut, you can, you can hold you can hold it. I go, like, oh, dude, I'm about a I'm about a cup, so you can grab it right right before from your friend's hand, and then you kind of nut in your own hand. Oh, so you're just you're. But yeah, we would have we would have a good time because. I mean, we're, it, it was a dry season. Like none of us. Well, would what really about get nutting on an? I heard that you would nut on an apple, and then somebody would eat the apple. Oh yeah, yeah I would that- cracker. <laughs> cracker. Yeah. I've never done yeah. that, but I would personally. I never liked. I always got really weirded out by like any kind of, I don't know, semen eating. Yeah, semen eating or like any kind of group sex or any kind of, mm. it was like very like, it felt like a weird line to cross. Like, cause then you would have to look at them the next day. No, I, no. I, I was okay with it. Cause <laughs> you, you, just, my, you ditched them. You never me talked and my, to them Me again? and my friends, like we first, first time we jerked off was to Reno 911. <laughs> I was oh, on really? that. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, interesting. It's an interesting choice of <laughs> yeah, material. Cause, cause, I did, ooh, I've never. My, huh? Ooh, which, me, which me, character? Uh, Nick Swartzen? It was the, it was the blonde girl. Yes. Oh, Wendy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wendy, yeah. Wendy McCovney. Yeah. She's yeah. She's great. She's wonderful. So we pause. So we pause, and uh, <laughs> sorry, Wendy. <laughs> we all we all started <laughs> off, and we're in a group because my mom had just left the house. We're in a group, so we we pretty much just jumped off. Oh, good, good. And then <laughs> good. Uh, I remember good. I told my friend, I'm like, dude, something came out of, came out of my penis. <laughs> I had no oh. idea what it was. Oh, oh! I had no clue because I, I, I knew, I knew the idea of, 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 of um, of getting off, but I never had done it. Uh huh. Uh huh. None of my friends had, so we decided we're like, dude, fuck it, like let's run it, put on some, <laughs> like, and then put on Reno nine one one, and uh, let's run it. Yeah, like, let's run and it. I let's showed do my it. friend like right after I opened my palm, and I'm like the webbing between the finger, like wow, like it's very. So it was pretty like. It was pretty badass. Yeah, you use really never seen that. You use really like hardcore bro sayings at the worst at the wrong times. <laughs> <laughs> Let's run it. You say that when you're playing basketball. And the, 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 the other day we were pulling into a Pollo Loco, and he goes, "Let's do it full send." <laughs> <laughs> Which you know, you got to be jumping out of an airplane to say full send. Or, <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe bungee jumping. Yeah, n- not eating. You know, oh. I love it. 
Yeah, but chicken special. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's get back to Mark. Margaret, thank you so much for putting up with him. That's I'm really enjoying nice. it. You're actually, you're actually, you're actually in good company, Jonah, because her comedy is really out there like that. So you, it's crazy what you talk about, and I think it's yeah. so. I mean, thank you. You, you talk fun. about having a big bush, right? Yeah, I've trimmed it back because it's really graying now. So it's kind of like super wiry. But um, gets me going. yeah, I really had to trim it back. I, I But it's going down my legs. Like it's it super is. when you get older, like the hair grows in really weird yes. patterns and areas. Tough. And it's growing down my legs. And I'm like, this is like all like well, why don't what? you shave some of it? Well, I'm shaving quite a lot of it. But then um, I would always forget the back. Because I yeah. just don't, I shave it myself. I don't ever go anywhere to do it. So I was like, I have a mullet. <laughs> Dude, if I, like, I'm in such awe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's uh, awesome. Uh, did you notice he has, he does have a face tattoo, but it's not real. It's not it real. Video. Cute. It's been yeah. Stuck so you, for two weeks now. I look like an idiot. What does it say? There's no regrets. Oh, okay. Because yeah. it's 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 just um, smeared a little bit because it's, it's been there for a while. It looks good. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm trying to get... Oh, I really am... I don't like it. Oh, yeah? Because I, I feel like I'm getting judged. Oh, well... I went to Starbucks and they fucked up my order because of the face tattoo. Really? <laughs> yeah. They didn't, no, they, they didn't... Were they intimidated? I don't know what it was, but they... I got a, a blonde roast. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, they gave me something. They gave me an espresso. Uh, well, um, I think that people are less judgmental about facial tattoos in general now. Less? I think so. Because yeah. so many people have them. So, I don't know. Yeah. Hey, what's going Jess. on? Not a just. Uh, not just. What are you mad She probably hates your shoes. <laughs> Why? <laughs> what? Yeah, it's, it's just. Lucia. You want to let her attack? This is really, this is really <laughs> unusual. She never misbehaves like this. <laughs> Is the gardener here so. again? Oh, is it, oh, I see. Wait, why is the gardener back? Oh, it's another gardener. Stop. She'll be, she'll be okay. She'll settle. She's out. mad. Stop. She's it's good. okay. okay see, she's. So, so then you get. She looks like she owns a Harley Davidson. Yeah, she's acting like that because she's wearing this like badass leather vest with like barbed wire. Yeah, maybe the maybe the outfit is. It's the her outfit is making her have attitude. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe you got to dress, dress her differently. <laughs> so bad. Does she have a motorcycle or no? <laughs> that would be cute, like a really little one. Like I could put one, make one. Oh, maybe she could ride the Roomba. Hey. hey. The Roomba. <laughs> Stop. It's okay. So then someone sees your act and gives you a sitcom. Yes. And, um, you know, they were all developing co like comedy shows from comedy people like... Brett Butler had a big show. Of Brett course, Butler. Roseanne. Yeah. Of course, Tim Allen. Yep. So everybody was looking to comedians to sort of be the future of like what television was going to be. And then what, how was that experience? Because I read that it was not great. It was hard because they uh, told me that I was too fat to play myself, which was like really like Jesus. disheartening. So then I like tried to lose you? a bunch of weight. I was 24. 24. So you're young. That's young. I was super young and I just didn't know what I was doing in television. And I, I didn't realize that it was my show. I kind of thought I was, I was working for somebody. Yeah. But when I look back, I'm like, oh, it was actually my show. I could have done whatever I wanted, but right. I didn't know. Yeah, you didn't know. I didn't know. But it's okay. And they told you you weren't Asian enough and too Asian. I was too Asian, not Asian enough, uh, too fat. It was weird. <laughs> so I just sort of like, I got super confused. If you had the show to do now, do you think that it would have <coughs> gone differently? <coughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Because television is different too. Television is, hey, 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 hey. Oh my God. Lucia, what's wrong? <coughs> You wanna sit, you wanna come sit with me? Why is she mad? She doesn't want to talk about the nineties. She has a lot of like Get strong feelings about the nineties and she gets really upset. I watched a clip of you this morning doing your mom. And oh yes. I, and I've seen you do your mom before. Yes. But I've never seen just such an embodiment of anything. Oh good. Like it's just <laughs> That's good. Un believable. Thank you. And it's so funny. Thank you. Have you ever felt like because I, I was just watching um, Chappelle the other day. I was watching his special from 2017, and he was talking about, you know, why he left because the jokes started to feel like 
um, people were laughing in the wrong spots. Oh, have uh-huh. you ever felt like that? No, I don't think so. I mean, I don't really know. Like, I can't really tell. Yeah, you know, for me, like doing an impression of my mom is just really because she, like, she's even so to me, she's really funny. Yeah. So like, I enjoy her and like I have to talk to her every time I talk to her now. Like I have to see her on Facetime because she can't hear. Okay. So she's like, ooh, <laughs> like she's like, now like she's got so so many things with her hearing. So she makes this weird wine like and i don't think she knows she's making the sound and and she loves like she's making the sound she can't just like my deaf cat making the sound she's deaf and you're on facetime with her (laughs) oh and um it's very, uh, to me, it's really, it's really great. Like, I think it's really funny because she's adapted yeah. to all of these things like the technology and America and still has that really thick accent, even though she's been here for far longer than she was ever in Korea. Right. Oh my God. So interesting. My parents. Mm. My mom has been here for, f- since 92. Wow. Yeah. And she still has the thickest. They're Armenian. Accent in the world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's just. BMWs and cigarette buds of an accent. I love it. Yeah. I love it. But it reminds me of my parents. Yeah. It's very, Korean and Armenian is very similar. It's yeah. very like. Is it? There's a lot of uh, love affairs also between um, the Korean and Armenian community. Yeah. Lots of, lots of lo- like tragic, like Romeo and Juliet, Juliet style love affairs. Really? Yeah. Especially in Glendale. It's like the Glendale sort of Shakespearean side of. Right, right. Forbidden love. Because they're yeah. very you know, intense, fiery cultures. Yeah. Yeah. I've, 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 uh, culturally it's like very, it's, it's very, very culturally like family values beautiful. and all that. Lots like, of old, like kind of a lot of patriarchy, lots of very sort of toxic masculinity combined with very, um, like intense values. And then, uh, there's, yeah, it, it all plays out at the Americana. It's really beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it's really beautiful. I'm going out on tour. Yes. We're going to do 18 shows. I love it. Super nervous. Why are you nervous? Um, because, I, because I haven't done it in a couple of years. Yeah. And, and I don't know, I don't have that much material. It it g- grows though. You know, it's like once you get out there, it's like riding a bike. How do you do it? How do you, what, what's your process now when you get up on stage? Do you know exactly what you're going to say? Pretty much. You like do. it's because I, I you write never. Shows. You write like a show every year, right? Yeah, Almost not every year, years. but like kind of, I try. You've written so many though. Yeah, I try to like just keep writing though and keep on going. And then some things that like you can come back to and then finish ideas that you, I have like jokes that I've been working on for like decades, yeah. but I keep on thinking of different ways of telling them. So then it works out as like new material. What's an example? What's an example? So, so you're working on for um, a decade. Like uh, this is a joke. Like I, people, people always want to pee on me. <laughs> and it's like super like a normal thing so what? um this man wanted to pee on my head and it was warm and then it got cold real fast and <laughs> then it got in my mouth and it was really salty that's pretty f- it was really like kiko man salty so that like and i'm like that's too salty because i have high blood pressure so i need the kind with the green top so then that joke has become like about melania you know how Melania has that weird expression on her face and she's always like kind of like squinting and it's yeah. because I think that Donald Trump has urinated on her face so many times that it's just because it burns. <laughs> and so those parts of the jo- like if you you could take parts of jokes and then keep putting them together and then it becomes something else over time. So those two jokes got married uh-huh. in an unholy ceremony right. at the, the Western on that, no, the, the Starbucks on Western. It's a very, like, you just have to work on little parts of jokes. So little parts of right. these jokes. Do you ever write the punchline first and then write the whole joke after? Sometimes. Yes. Sometimes. You've done that before. I've done that before. And then also sometimes I'll do jokes that I have no idea why it's funny, but it is. Or I I, I sometimes really, am, like, I find things very mysterious. Like, why does this work? But I guess it does. Right. And you you could stay in character. I saw you do like 20 minutes as your mom. Yeah. You could, you could do that for. I could do that for. Well, I, I have like done that for whole shows. and For a whole show. Yeah. I can do that too. Like as a. Because it's basically the voice of my Asian-ness. So it's like the voice of 
this other kind of entity coming through of like somebody who's an immigrant, somebody who is like looking at this country as this very like new place and a kind of a baffling place. So that's where I think that character can really shine. Sorry, it's my son. <laughs> Off topic, you're into the peace stuff? <laughs> you know, I find it. I, you know, when (laughs) people always want to pee on me, but then I'm like, not sure what's sexy about it. Like I can get with the, with the kink. I can understand how things are interesting, but something about peeing, like it's very appealing to a lot of people and I cannot figure out what the kink is. Like I can't, I can't approach it with a, I can't find it sexy, but I'll do it. Okay. You know what I mean? Like I'm not opposed to it. I don't think it's gross. I just think to me, it's, it's confusing because I'm like, well, what about it is sexual? Just because the urinary mechanism and this sexual thing is so, to me, it's very far apart. Yeah. One experience I've had, I've, uh, I've, I've like laid, I've laid down and a girl has. Peed on your chest? No, no, like. Pooped on my chest. Oh, pooped. And I was, that's like one thing that kind of, and I've only done it once. Can you start the story again? My son is, was texting me. <laughs> what did you say? One thing I, like I've done that yeah. was like f- fucking awesome. Yeah. I had a girl poop on my chest. <laughs> no, you didn't. I did. Shut up. And it was the most f- coolest thing. <laughs> and that, that's like one thing that really got me going. I've only done it once. And how was it? Was it big? Yeah, it was like, <laughs> yeah, it was a little surprising, but. Margaret doesn't believe you. No. I don't know. Like, I think, um, yeah, like peeing. Is it weird? Is that it's weird? not weird. It's not weird. It's a normal. I mean. It's normal. It's normal. It's like, you know, we all have a fascination with sexuality and then sometimes it blurs into things like pee and poo because it's it's supposed to be like. Uh, Hot. Forbidden. Yeah. Anything that is like forbidden is the sort of exciting about the problem with pooing is like the cleanup after. Okay. That to me, cause I already get mad about cleaning the, the cat box. So yeah, yeah. something like that <laughs> would be a lot. Human shit is some, there's something about human shit that is really deeply affecting. It's unbelievable. Two girls, one cup is, Oh God. Yeah. You know, it, it was around for like a year. And I'd heard about it and I asked my friend, I said, what is it? And they go, it's a, you know, it's a girl pooping in another one's mouth, blah, 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 blah. And it's the, the poop coming out. And I was like, I'm not going to look at it. I'm not going to look at it. And then one day I broke down and I looked. Yeah. And I never forgot it. Because it's so. Uh, that was one of the best. Trans- <laughs> oh, really? You like <laughs> transgressive. You like it? Yeah. It's transgressive. Yeah, yeah. That's, I think it's. But think about how it smelled, though. Like, that's to me, like, because poo is yeah. okay. The thing is, that with poo, we don't connect with poo because it's always underwater. Yeah. So we never really fully, really connect with our poo. And the, the thing about it is when your poo is somehow, like, m- manipulated somehow, like, smashed or whatever, it smells so much worse. Yeah, but, I mean, there's some guys that are into that. Yeah. Like, me I, being I, one I of them. I want to smash the, f- the f- <laughs> piece of poo yeah so i can smell and get into it you know that's cool take it in i mean you know but the peeing i just i appreciate people wanting it and like i just i don't really get what the sexy part is but i'll do it yeah what's the wildest thing someone's asked you to do um it's a wildest thing mine's pretty boring I'm trying to think if I have one. Mine says I just role play, probably. Probably. That's it. Um, I feel like you're the type of dude, like, it's just, like, do you, you're, like, a, you're not weirdy, you're not, like, kinky and shit. Not, 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 like, no, not, not too kinky, no. No? But, but, you know, into, like, I'm into, like, a little role play. Okay. That's yeah, cool. I'm That's really that. fun. I um, like that. You just, like, I don't know, do you, like, do dress up stuff and... Sometimes I'll pretend Naveen works for me. What's up? In the morgue, you said? <laughs> she pretends she works for me. Oh, God. That you said. That's nice. Yeah. I mean, it's cute. It's like... Like uh, a hot secretary? <laughs> yeah. That's okay. a very classic <laughs> sexual fantasy. Um, the weirdest thing... This is f- weird. This guy who... I really liked him. He was really nice. He uh, would 
he stole a veterinary surgical machine that would um, remove, like a vacuum that would remove fluids during surgery, like bodily fluids yeah. for, for animals. So he got one of those and he attached a suction cup thing so that he could um, suction cup his penis and testicles <laughs> to uh and he would have it on there wow. for 10 to 12 hours at a time to the point where his scrotum was enlarged to the size of a basketball and then he would just um be so high off of this sensation of enlarging his scrotum in that manner that and it wouldn't go down for probably like 72 hours or something and um he would go to these sex parties and kind of show it off and it was so weird but he's such a nice man <laughs> uh very wealthy um handsome older he's probably 72 or something uh he's probably dead now this was in the turn of the century so it was like 2001 balls or something so big, he died. well they probably just he he's just <laughs> passed away from but giant it, balls. it was like a he was had a globe <laughs> in his lap and, and he would um, show it off at a sex party he'd yeah. walk around and people were like not into it because it was just yeah so weird what if he had like errands to run i mean he probably i don't know he was an attorney he was a very <laughs> like interesting import. man very interesting giant balls giant balls man but um it was so big and uh so this is a kind of club too where you would get in like a latex bed and they would suck all of the they would vacuum seal you in it so they would suck all of the spare like air around you so you just be oh. vacuum sealed into uh, a latex bed and then i remember this guy ejaculated when he was in the sucked in the bed so it was almost like um you were going to sous vide the whole thing like he was making his own sauce <laughs> okay like it was like a pat of butter next to um his big bodily meat it was very interesting just to see the the semen in there and that these sex parties that you, you would go to you'd see the same people every week or every yeah month? every uh i've got been to a whole bunch of different ones and over time, you would see the um, same people like over many years. Yeah. I don't go to them anymore, Do, but- Are um, people masked? No. It's no. not like Eyes Wide Shut or anything. No. It's just it's just dumb people from the valley. But it's just like <laughs> one time I saw this guy from a sex party. He, um, he was like this bondage master. And he uh, it was so funny because he was um, the guy that- bolts uh he does a lot of work with foundations and houses to yeah. figure out how to uh make them safe for earthquake he's he's sort of like the big earthquake safety guy and he he binds buildings to the foundation yeah and he's like a huge like mass bondage master but i went uh, to this thing where i was trying to like get like consultation for we have this building that i had to like <laughs> make it like up to code and then he came out i'm like oh it's you <laughs> of course it's you Greg. like first he's like binding all yeah, these like girls Greg. at this party and now he's binding all these buildings to the side of the hill it's really great Do you remember you yeah yeah so we were laughing so it's you hilarious. should probably have him come out and look at your property because you have a lot of <laughs> he's a f freak but he's a professional <laughs> it's a he's good at his job it's really yeah. incredible I so yeah myself doing like that when i'm like like way older like when I'm in like my 60s, probably go to sex parties. No, not like yeah, maybe, probably. It's fun. Margaret, have you ever been to a nudist colony? No. Or a nude beach? I've run. Into I've been one. to. A, I've been to a nude beach. Um, nothing, right? It's nothing. It's fine. It's I, there, that's that to me. I, but I don't really like to go out in the sun, so it's not that exciting to me. <laughs> um, right. But uh, I'm sensitive to the sun too. I don't yeah, like I don't it. like to be out in the sun. So why would it? Nude I had beach skin is like. Earlier this oh year. really? Yeah, cut it all out. Oh good, good. You gotta I get. I hope. Well, I had a, a punch biopsy on my face, so you did. Yeah, we gotta get we gotta get ahead of it. Hey, you tell. I wanted to ask you about this. You've been in a polyamorous relationship. Yes. How's that? Because I, I loved some, it. That's something that I, I don't know. I don't know I how you could it. do that. Isn't that, isn't that double the problems? Yes. It is right, but it's worth it. It is. If you can if you can manage the problems, it's worth it. I don't have the bandwidth to do that now. But um, it was worth it at the time. Why was it worth it? Because it, it really led me to have a sense of understanding about the people that I was in relationship with and gave them space to have a good time and then have the trust that they would come back to me. Yeah. And that's really great. So um, also sometimes like 
one person can't fulfill all the things that we need in a romantic relationship. Right. So I, I was like honoring that, but at the, at the end, um, what broke it up wasn't jealousy or anything. It was drugs and alcohol. Yeah. So, you know, that was a big problem because polyamory in my mind for me really led to drinking and using drugs uh-huh. because anything that's like transgressive in like a sex club or whatever, for me, you need the element of getting high on top of it. Cause I need all of the, I can't have just pieces of it. Like I have to be high when I engage in anything like that. Uh-huh. And so now being sober, it's just awkward. It's weird. Yes. Yes. You can't really go to a sex club. I can't people do it. Yeah. People do it. How long like, have you been I sober? don't want to. Seven years. Seven years. Mm-hmm. And how's that? Great. You're good. Yeah. That's great. I love it. What was your drug of choice? Well, um, everything. Yeah. Uh, but if if I had to uh, really get specific, it's um, opiates. Yes. And very specifically, Roxy 30s. I don't know what that is. It's the blue uh, ones that are, they're all pressed with fentanyl now, so you couldn't do them but oh. back in the past before it wasn't it, they were great it's just like a just a high just an opioid high it's not it's a lifestyle uh, it's like a it's, it's like a, a get up in the morning kind of thing it's a know? way of like it's, yeah. it's it's don't go to ever go to sleep or don't ever wake up kind of thing it's like you know to me i don't like to um go back and do any of that anymore because it's just like i can't i can't handle it because no. I, I just take it too far yeah yeah i can't even have a drink at night we were no. out last night. I was like, am I going to have a drink? I no, it's not yeah. good. Um, I always felt like I was going to like, because I'm like, okay, it's either food or drugs mm-hmm. to me, mm-hmm. right? Because um, if I'm if I'm having like a mean meal mm-hmm. and I do opiates on top of it, mm-hmm. it's like a heart attack for sure. But if it's, <laughs> it's like, if so I got to either choose, I'm like, okay, do I eat a bunch of food? which will give me a heart attack eventually, or do I do drugs? Yeah. So for me, it was like, okay, fuck it. Like, let me eat. Yeah. Yeah. If I do it together, it'd be kind of weird. Well, if you do it together, it's just like you kind of don't enjoy it as much. Like, I don't know. Like, to me, food is kind of a drug into itself. So. Yeah. And opiates, I'm never hungry on them. Really? Yeah. Yeah, you're never Maybe hungry on um, opiates for weight loss. I've been, it's not. It's not the best. I'm well, I'm not going to do it. I don't, I don't like drugs. I'm not the big drug guy. The problem with opiates is that you never sh- Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, you, I was, like, so constipated for all the time that I was high. You, uh, you got to eat um, um, prunes. prunes. Yeah. They, they really blow you out. Yeah. It, it, it kind of empties out your bowels. When, when the polyamorous relationship ends and one person goes, does the, do the two people still stay together? Or does everybody just... Dis, uh, disperse no well our polyamorous <laughs> relationship was just like i me and my husband and then we had different people come in oh i see so it wasn't like a I, solid so like you always three, had the thruple. foundation of your yeah. husband yeah we didn't have like a, th- a thruple going I'll, i've never really had that where it's just like the thruple for, throughout yeah um but yeah i don't know if i i would revisit anything like that yeah and you never wanted to have kids or anything no didn't want to do it. no yeah. no it's just too um, I don't know. I just never, never felt it, but I have a lot of animals, which is enough. Yeah, that's plenty. Lucci is quiet now. She yeah, had to she's... like say a lot of things before, but now she's cool. Yeah. Her name is Gucci. Lucia. Gucci. Lucia. 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 <laughs> I thought Gucci was like the, like a long. Gucci is cute. Gucci. Yeah. yeah. Gucci. Like Gucci. Gucci. It's yeah. cute. Um, how is the movie? I, I haven't seen it yet, but Fire Island, you're in that. Oh, yeah, so fun. Yeah. I love Bowen I, Yang. I love Bowen. Did he write it? No, uh, Joel Kim Booster wrote it. Oh, okay. he's wonderful, and they're they're the best. And I'm hoping that they'll do a sequel or a prequel. So we'll make it again or make more. Really but yeah, fun. I love them. It's really fun. Yeah. Really, really sweet guys. Jonah, do you have any? You should ask Margaret questions about comedy. Um, She's a master. <laughs> Can, is there any is there any hope for Jason and I? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're doing it. We've struggled with comedy our whole life. I mean, Jason's been struggling since the 1800s. Like he's been. Yeah. And this guy's been. <laughs> well, who he's opened who up are, with Benjamin Franklin? He's opened. That's up. good. That's good. Yeah, Founding fathers. American legends. 
What do you, what do you want to do as a comedian? Like, who do you like as a comedian? Like, who's your favorite? Um, I like Dave Chappelle mm -hmm. and, and then I watch all the, um, I love Melissa McCarthy. I love, uh, Bill Burr, I love, uh, I, I watch them all, actually. I would love to do a show like that. I watched Neil Brennan's show the other day. Blocks, yeah, I love Neil, yeah. Really great. Um, I'd love to do something like that. Mm -hmm. Tell a story or whatever, like. Well, I think then it's like a matter of like spending some time and going out and talk, just telling that story to an audience without expectations for yourself yeah and then having the humor come out of that so it's like the thing about stand-up comedy is like a trial and error process so you can go and go out and do something and like kind of put together just ideas it don't have to be jokes necessarily but just ideas of like the points of what happened in your story yeah and then tell it and then go back and listen and sort of like listen for reactions of the audience but also like how you feel while you're telling it yeah. and then you can put together a solid show from that did you go to school with Sam Rockwell? Sam Rockwell was my first comedy partner. And we really? had a comedy duo. And you can see uh, like a little bit of our stuff. I think it's on YouTube. But we uh, did shows together. And he moved to New York and, of course, pursued an amazing yeah. career as an actor. And I stayed with comedy. Wow. Yeah. If I show you some of the premises. <laughs> yes. I'm not even kidding. Do it. Do it. Do it. I know, but like, show her a promise. I get so nervous to keep like, I don't know how to like expand the joke. Like, I because funny ideas, but like, I don't know. Like, Are these stand-up jokes or videos? Like, my foreign parents keep reminding me that they had two kids by the time they were my age. I just think that was a bad financial decision. You know, it was, it was hard growing up. Uh, well, no, it's like stuff like that. Or like, man, it's weird growing up with foreign parents, especially as a man. You have to be tough no matter the situation. Like, I sat my dad down the other day, and I said, um, Dad, I'm heartbroken. My girl cheated on me. But, like, how do I expand to that? Like, how do well, I like, what would, he, what would he say? Like, the joke there is, like, what's his response to this? Like, how is he telling you to be more of the man that he is? Like, that the, the humor is kind of like the, the um, difference between your responses of yeah. what a man is. Yeah. Like, so there's so many things in between the lines there. So the main joke is the difference between you and your family and your parents and where they come from. Yeah, exactly. Like, especially with foreign parents, it's like, yeah. man up. You can't yeah. Be a bitch about it. Right. But like, how do I find a way to. It's getting specific. The, yeah. The details. It's getting specific. Like details of like some memories. So would be my dad's response. Yeah. What would be your dad's response and how would he say it? And like the way that he's talking about it. You said it so well on a podcast this morning. You said something like, funny is not what we think is funny, but uh, the unexpected way it is. we get there, right? Yeah. Well, funny is like the uh, unexpected thought. So it's the unexpected memory. What's the unexpected thought? What's the unexpected response? Like your father's response is the unexpected response. And that's what humor is based on. What do you think would be the unexpected response? Well, I wouldn't know because I didn't. I didn't Margaret grow up Cho, with him. Emmy Award winning writer and producer. Please write my material. Yeah. So that, uh, like the class, like one of the jokes from my comedy is like the classic was when I was telling my parents that I was telling my mom that I wanted to be com a comedian. So I told her I wanted to be a comedian when I was fourteen, and she said, "Oh, maybe it's better if you just die." <laughs> So that's like a classic unexpected response kind of moment. Right, right. So that's an old joke, but do you still tell that joke? Because it's so funny. Well, it's if I I put it, I'll put it in and like as a way to set up another joke. I see. So sometimes you can have these old jokes that you have that are like kind of the perfect example of oh let's use this as a detail, something else as opposed to like a punchline. Yeah, yeah, a little springboard. Yeah, it's good. Wow, that's a good joke. I wrote a joke the other day. Yes. Uh, I really want to do some openings for you, man. I just oh, I come and do it. Materials down, dude. June fourth, Oxnard. Um, that was a joke I wrote the other day. Oh, I wrote a, I read it, which he doesn't want to hear. Okay. <laughs> the crowd, Shut I'm the getting fuck heckled. Up, Jason. <laughs> what the fuck up? Oh, I, I ran into my high school bully the other day. I went and saw my dad, or something like that. <laughs> Does that work? Wait, what did you say? Wait, I don't. Wait, I didn't. Did you, are you having a stroke? What the <laughs> I, that? I saw my. What I the 
Super Bowl the other day. I went over to my dad's house. Oh. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that, <laughs> so, that yeah. works. Yeah. But then you have to have details of like, what does that mean? And well, how is he a bully? He's like, a bully. Yes. Like, how is he a bully? Margaret, we're not posting this podcast. We just wanted advice from you. Yeah. You can have all the advice you want. Do you, you want to come to my birthday party tomorrow? Sure. Margaret, you're so cool. Thank you. You're cool. No, you're, she, Jonah, she's like really cool. It, the she, way that she can sit here and talk about literally anything. Yeah. And she doesn't get like. I know. I, I thought about that because I'm like, oh. I'm, I'm sitting here because this, we're trying, he's, he's auditioning today. And I was like, oh, no, I hope, I hope Margaret Cho likes Jonah. Oh, <laughs> dude, sometimes I'll say, jo like, I'll say, I'll be weird and say jokes to people. Like, I'll be at a f party and like, I'll say a joke that'll fly over like a drunk girl's head. And like, I'm like, oh, f dude, I'm so weird. You know, like, <laughs> God damn it. And like, there's people like, I've, I, 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 have you ever, has it ever happened? Like, you say like jokes and you're like, f around and stuff and people sure. just flies over people's heads. Oh, yeah. Sure. Then, yeah, then, all the time. Like, but like with her, she's, she's like, okay to f around. So it's yeah. like cool to like. Yeah, she's so nice. Oh, you guys are nice. It's like, our, it's like our you guys Jonah, are what'd nice. You huh? What'd you think of Margaret? <laughs> what? What'd you think of Margaret? What do you mean? I said that we're talking about her like she's not here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah right? Seriously. <laughs> she was so cool. Yeah, yeah, dude. She was awesome. <laughs> What's, you have a, you have lady advice for him? You know, how to get a woman yeah. or a man or whatever? Yeah. I'm bad at it. Why are you bad at it? I have bad social skills unless it's like, like when we're doing recording and doing bits and doing all this shit. I'm okay, but as soon as I start talking to a human, mm -hmm. I, I I um fold. Oh, yeah. why? I I don't know. I have like I, I man. I think I have like a mix between like Asperger's and autism and all this other bullshit. Like I don't know what's wrong with my brain. Like mm. like I said, when we're f***ing around, it's fun and cool. But yeah. like another human, I. I, I don't know. It's yeah. Like weird. You do really good with, with girls. I don't think you're actually interested in dating them, though. You just like to flirt. Yeah. I think that's the problem. I think there's no end game. There's no actual end game for you. Whereas me, like, I really wanted to meet somebody, and I did. But for you, you're like, you don't want a girlfriend because you think it'll – he thinks a girlfriend's going to, like, ruin his uh, career and his business and his focus. Mm. Yeah. What do you think about that, I don't Margaret? think so. I mean, I don't know. It depends. It depends on what you want. I mean, I think – relationships aren't all that as we get older right? it's sort of like really boring to Thank have you. to like deal with Ooh. that kind of stuff but Hot if you want to have a girlfriend i think you would have no trouble getting one um I, I i can't i my brain is weird with like <laughs> when i like really like i said this last time like when i really like someone i can mm -hmm. i it'll f it'll f me up yeah i i'm i have an obsessive like with even like for example like when i'm trying to do a, like a video for example like i i'll obsess about it and then it's the same like if if like I, we get into the a weird argument i won't stop thinking about it yeah my like, god oh, damn what is she doing now like she's she doesn't like me anymore i f mm -hmm. up i did this like we're it's not gonna work out we're gonna break yeah. up this is gonna happen that's gonna so it's always like i don't know it's very normal, can't handle it. but it, it, everybody's like that. Really? Everybody, everybody gets insecure and scared like that in yeah. relationships. It's that's a very normal thing. I had a fight this morning, and I'm, that's all I'm thinking about. It was with me exactly. Again. Yeah, it's hard. It's really hard. It's really hard. Yeah, dude. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I wish I could. I wish I could have like the right reactions to things all the time. Right. Like, I don't. You know, I get tired, or I'm like, I don't want to do that, or you almost beat the shit out of me in Dubai. <laughs> on a camel. He almost pulled me off a camel and beat me up. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Camels are really hot. Uh, Tell Margaret. They're really high up, too. <laughs> Tell Margaret, Jason. Tell Mark. He, he, they were trying to get him on this camel for this TV show. <laughs> yeah. And he would take every time. he It happened a few times. They wanted him on this camel for the shot. And he would take like 40 minutes to get on the camel. Uh huh. So it's either like get on the camel or don't. Yeah. But we're all standing there. And I got really, I got frustrated. Tell them how That's big the camel was. Tell they're them how big. They're, they're as big as. They're big. Yeah. yeah as big a, as the it's ceiling. Kinda like, it's kind of like. His head would be on the, oh, through the ceiling. Through the ceiling. It's the very camel. big. Yeah. They're yeah. scary. Yeah. But so, the camel gets down. The camel, the camel gets down. on the Right. But as soon as you're yeah. up, you're, you're. You're really high you're, up. You're, 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 you're on like up. the second floor. Yeah. <laughs> with, and that's with no harness, nothing. So. It's scary. Yeah. It's not like, oh, cool. Just hop on a camel. It's like, okay, cool, hop on a camel, but he's also going to lift up. <laughs> Too much. That's yeah, a lot. A lot going on. Yeah. A lot going on. Yeah. Do you have any good advice you could give us? Uh, don't 
be afraid and yeah. don't don't but don't also don't let your fears um, dictate what the next step is. And so you should definitely get out there and do stand up and do shows and talk about YouTube. Yeah. Talk about all that stuff. There's a good show in there. Yeah. And and, and an exciting show for your fans because they want to see that history of. Yeah. So that's important. That could be cool. Yeah. 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 All right. Jonah, anything else for Margaret? Um, you got her here. This is probably the last time you'll ever see her. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, have, I have no questions, dude. You want to go on a date? Yeah, yeah. Are, are you into like <laughs> batter dudes? Like, yeah, sure. Like 28 ish? Well, I am. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Um. Yeah. Let's do it. We'll we'll figure it out. Okay. Cool. <laughs> okay. Hell yeah. Maybe when the seasonal items at, at El Pollo Loco come back in. Oh, fire! I got all that. Like, I I have a El Pollo Loco connect. Sounds in. good. All right. I at. can't believe you were on time today, dude. I that know. That was impressive. I, this really? was the big test. It was like if he was late for Margaret Cho, oh. then you know, listen, we can't work. We can't work with people <laughs> like that because he's I, been up to like seven or eight hours late before. Wow. For things. Yeah. No, That's, I haven't. Two, all right. Not two, the new me. Two. Not the new me. Is there a new you? No. Is, th is this a new you? Because I, I was sensing a new you. Really? Yeah. Cause, the cause new me is like one book a week. I, I, I got to make sure I'm on top of the videos, posting twice a week. Yeah. It's Trying so, to, you know. I, so, I got to fix my life, dude. It's so tough when they're young too, Margaret. Like mm -hmm. a lot of these guys that I hang out with, you're, you're 28. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially for a guy. Mm -hmm. You know, they're morons. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I got to like I was I was a moron when I was 28 too. You know, like I think we I, all are, you're yeah. just not Yeah. not totally there. There's yeah. a lot of development that needs to happen. It takes a while. Yeah. So what would you say, Margaret? Would you keep Jonah or get rid of him? I say keep him. Really? Yeah. Jonah's doing great. Wow. A vote from a comedy legend. Yes. That's Yeah. Was it the Bush comments and stuff? <laughs> yes. It was? Yes. Okay. That's good. Oh yeah. <laughs> Call back. All right, uh, go see go see Margaret live. Go to margaretcho.com. Go check out all her dates. Um, go to YouTube and watch her clips because I watched them all morning and they're hilarious and thank really you. fantastic. And thank you thank for coming. You. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you soon. See you soon. Okay. Bye, Margaret. Bye. Bye, Jonah. Bye, guys. Bye.